going to talk about them dick dicks. One of the tiniest antelopes in our African plains. One minute, let me take a sip of my dawa. Dawa in Swahili means medicine. It's a concoction of honey, lemon, ginger, garlic, and hot water. It's really good and this is what has been keeping us safe and giving us stronger immunity to fight COVID. I've had, I've had my both shots. Before I get my booster shot, I have to take this on a daily basis. It's recommended by the doctors. Thank you. Mm. It's yummy. Beautiful. Back to our story. The dick dicks are really tiny, small animals. They live in pairs, a boy and a girl. Maybe four pounds, five pounds animals. The boys have very short horns, tiny ones. Females do not carry horns. They live together for their lifetime. There are stories that when one dies, the other one commits suicide. And whenever I tell my guests, whenever I share this story with people, they say, how can they commit suicide? Do they go looking for hyenas or leopards? Or what do they do? And this is my story because I saw with my own eyes, Dick Dicks commit suicide. This afternoon we were in Samburu Game Reserve, which is in the northern part of Kenya. We had a group of photographers. When you are with the photographers, you have three people in a jeep, only three, so that each of your guests have enough room at the back. They can move to the right, to the left, you know, because animals are anywhere. When you are driving, they could be on the right side, so you, there is nobody on your way. And this afternoon, we were driving in Samburu, Game Reserve, and we had from another guide that there was this leopard on top of a tree. So I used my radio, I called my colleagues because we were three jeeps, I called them. In fact, my daddy, David, at that time he was still working as a guide. So I called them and we all headed to this place and we saw a leopard that was like 15 feet away from the road on top of an acacia tree. We have the acacia trees with lots of thorns and acacia trees mainly grow in dry country. And we have the flat-topped acacia trees in Samburu. There was a leopard right on the top. He was not very visible because there was a lot of bushes and he was relaxing. And uh, after some minutes of waiting and discussing, we were debating, is it going to come down? Is it going to stay there for the rest of the day? It's almost time now to start getting back to the camp, and it's a long way. And some people were impatient. They said, no, no, it's not going to do anything. And as soon as they left, we saw this. We saw the leopard scanning the plane. He stood up, he looked, and you could see him go into hunting mode. And we knew he must have seen something. A long way away was a dick dick that was coming towards the tree with the leopard. And I say to my guests, I think this dick dick is going to commit suicide. He said, oh Stanley, are you sure? Have you ever seen it before? I say there is always a first time and I think we are going to see it for the first time. The dick dick came all the way to the base of the tree where the leopard was. And the leopard was moving one inch. Every five minutes, the leopard would only move one inch. Then he would freeze. Because they have to be very careful. Leopards are not good runners. But they hunt by ambush. So they have to sneak up to the animal and very quickly jump or make a big leap. If they miss it, they don't pursue. They're not good runners. But they 
are very patient. They have to wait until the animal is close enough. This time the leopard is up on a tree and the dick dick is down on the there was no way the leopard would come down on that tree without the dick dick seeing the leopard. So somebody asked me in the car, is it possible for this leopard to jump from 20 feet up, go straight down to the dick dick? I said, I have never seen it, but I think it's possible. Because in our job, in my life as a guide, I have learned to never say never. When clients ask you, do you think this is going to happen? Have you ever seen it? I say, I have not seen it, but you know, you never say never because there is a lot of surprises out there in the field. So we waited for this to happen. Two of my colleagues said, oh, we, we think it's time to go back. My client said, please, can we wait for five more minutes? I said, oh, why not? We are here. This is why we are here. Everybody else, there were other cars from other camps in the, around the tree. They all left. And we were left, only my car and my three guests. I can't remember their names. But this was a group that was uh, with uh, John and Barbara Gellack. These are photographers from Wyoming. I don't remember exactly the people in my car, their names. So we waited. And as soon as it was quiet enough, because there was no movement, there was nothing. It was just the natural noise of birds and the wind. This leopard decided to give us a show. Very slowly, this leopard turned, slowly like this, and he faced the dick dick that was down. And I started counting. I could, I was almost a hundred percent sure he was going to go for it. And I said to my guest, please get ready. Before I count ten, this beast is going to come down, and this is going to be the an opportunity of a lifetime. And you please do not miss it. Do not let me down. Get it on your put your finger on the shutter button. That's what I told them. The dick dick, remember I said dick dicks commit suicide. The dick dick was not going anywhere. He came all the way down there. And I really wanted it to happen to prove my story that they commit suicide. He was there innocent, and I was right at the base of the tree. And I started counting 10, 9, 8, 7. Six. Oh my god, it's going to happen. Five. When I got to three, the leopard took and it was so quick. He came down like a lightning and got the dick dick by the neck. He faced our vehicle and the dick dick is dangling from the leopard's mouth and making a lot of... It was so quick. A leopard is strong, dick dick is small, so killing it took like seconds. But he still held it in his mouth and he was looking at the cameras. Oh, the sound of happiness from the shutter button. I was so happy. That is what, as a guide, whenever there is no sound of happiness from the cameras, you know you are not do doing a good job. But when the cameras are busy and they heat up, you know something good is happening. For five minutes, it was the most active and intense moment for my guests. They got awesome shots, beautiful shots, amazing shots that maybe nobody else have ever taken. And I say to them, can we now go back to the camp? They said, please, Stanley, let's go back to the camp. It's okay. How can you top this? How can you top it? This is the first day in Samburu. We are here for four nights. What else are you going to show us? And they said, Mother Nature is going to provide. So I told them, we have a long way to go. Sit down, get down on your seats. Buckle up because it's going to be pedal to the marrow, back to the camp. 
On the way, I said, did any, any of you get the shot of the leopard coming down? They said, oh, we have not checked. We, oh, I think I got it. We see when we get back to the camp, we are going to check. So we get back to the camp. Everybody goes to their rooms and they are downloading their pictures and checking them on their laptops. Only one lady, it was two boys and one girl in my car. The girl was the only one that managed to get the tail of the leopard coming down. Because it was quick, they tried it, they, we had the opportunity, but they missed it. She got only the tail. But the pictures of the leopard down with a storm of dust and the dig dig dangling in his mouth were so cool. Now do you believe me that the dig digs commit suicide? The dig dig came all the way. He was alone. He must have lost his wife. They stick together for a lifetime. And this time in Samburu, we saw it. Dick Dicks commit suicide. Thank you.